What is going on YouTube? This is Max coming back at you once again with another video. This time I'm going to be going over the Yamaha Music Cast application. If you like this type of content, if you could do me a favor by hitting that like button and that subscribe button, I greatly appreciate it. If you don't know anything about the Yamaha Music Cast, I'm going to go ahead and go through a tutorial I, because I currently have the RX AA8, the newest Yamaha receiver, that's their flagship receiver. And I want to go through some of my settings that I, that I have currently on set on my receiver for my surround sound because people are, have been asking some questions specifically more of what are my settings, where are some of the settings mean, and I kind of want to do a walkthrough for that and also show that using the MusicCast application is a lot more easier to use than going through the Yamaha interface if you're looking at your TV projector or whatever your display that you're looking at here. So I'm about to go ahead and switch over and show just like a brief tutorial, show what each one means specifically. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I don't wanna make this video too long, but I do wanna give this, uh, show people what I'm currently using, what the application is used for, and showing how easy it, it is to use. So I'm about to go ahead and switch to my phone so I could go ahead and go through the walkthrough. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Okay, so I'm about to go ahead and switch to the Yamaha Music Cast. And I'm going to go ahead and show you, show everyone my setup, my current setup that I'm currently using at this moment. So going into my settings, if you look at the surround AI, I currently have that disabled. The reason being is because if you have surround AI enabled, the following functions are not available. So one is the straight decode mode, cinema DSP HD, surround decoders. So for me, for my scenario, if I use surround decoders, I want to make sure I'm getting my Atmos and my DTS audio playback and pretty much the other codecs on here. But if you enable the surround AI, you won't get that feature it will be automatically disabled. So that's why you see that on my setup where I had that surround AI disabled. So for me, by selecting surround decoder, the unit enables a multi-channel playback from two channel, multi-channel sources without sound field effects. So this is used when surround decode is selected. So for instance, just like how I mentioned before, you will be able to get Dolby Surround and Neuro X or DTS, uh, excuse me, DTS, when you have that enabled. So remember when I was talking about Surround AI, if it's enabled, then um, this is where you kind of look at all the different optimized scenes or surround elements that give you kind of like that illusion. So just like sports or action game and so forth. But looking at this, if you do do surround AI, it does disable the straight decode mode and cinema DSP, HD and surround decoder. So going back to the beginning of the menu for pure direct, I keep that disabled. Reason being is because from my understanding from pure direct, it's only for listening for two front channel speakers here, left and right. And so when engaging in this, depending on the source, source that you're listening to, you only get two speaker playback and the center may be disabled and subwoofer. So for me, I really just look at movies. I really don't listen to music that much. So I never keep this enabled. So I go ahead and disable it for my use case scenario. It might be different for you. Uh, for depending on your use case, you may just listen to music. So this might be a better option for you. But for me, I keep that disabled. So going back to the surround decoder type, I have this set to auto. Reason being is when you have it set to auto, I am able to either get Dolby Digital or Neurax or DTS on here. I don't want to play with the settings when it comes to specifically if it's specifically Dolby or DTS or whatever the case may be. So that's why I keep that in auto and let the receiver pick up the actual 
correct audio when I'm playing movies or games or whatever the case may be. So for an enhancer, I keep that off. That's really used for compressed music. So for me, I don't use that at all. For wipeout volume, that's something that if you use the mic for that. And adaptive DRC, I keep that disabled. Really have, haven't used that. I have used the extra bass for my front speakers. Remember, I have the Kef R11. Sorry if I'm going a little bit too fast, but I kind of want to just go through this and uh, just give you just an idea of what I'm using and why I like this app. So without spending way too much time on this, I could probably spend pretty much hours going over each one. So just to try to make this video short, this is pretty much my settings, but going back into the music cast, you can see that you have from my music to scenes to sources on here you can see that you can see my playstation 5 my xbox series x and a new apple 4k tv all hooked up together and if you go back to the home screen you can see you can set up with different zones in my case i'm just using this for the basement not using it in any other locations but you also could connect your amazon your google assistance to this and it's pretty self-explanatory and straightforward firmware updates the app will notify you if there's a new firmware update for the new Yamaha, which I think is pretty neat. And going from here, it, there is pretty much a plethora of options from using this app. So I recommend anybody who is interested, please download this app from either your iPhone or your Android device. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the receiver UI and kind of show some of my settings. So switching over to my projector, I'm about to go ahead and show the receiver UI. So looking at the speakers, I'm about to go through my current setup. I don't have all my speakers yet. <laughs> I'll also get it next week, so please stay tuned for that. So for right now, I temporarily have 7.2 surround sound, so I have four insulin speakers and the rest is uh, my front speakers and my subwoofers. But after going through the calibration and wipe uh, pow, uh, excuse me, wipe pow calibration, you can see that by default, by looking at the uh, parametric EQ specifically, I have it is it goes by default as flat, but there are different settings that you could use. I have went through each individual one and I felt for my use case scenario, I thought that flat was were, were better. If you, if anyone who is curious to know the differences between each one, please let me know in the comments. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this because I've this that would take like another video just to kind of go over that. But at the end of the day, I'm sticking with flat because I, I felt that's the best sound from watching movies and playing games. And going from there. So this give you kind of like a brief description of which uh, settings are used for. So that's something just uh, to look at. So jumping into the controller settings, which I thought was pretty interesting. So right now with the program key of the controller, you could set it to different settings. I have mine set to eight. So with eight, if anyone is interested, this is this is kind of like the best thing for my setup, but it's up to you. But when I use on the remote control assignment eight, you do have the opportunity to change the display on the front of your Yamaha receiver. So for the RX A8, I do like to see how if a movie is decoding correctly based on what is supposed to display. And from my viewing distance, I can see if it's playing Adobe Atmos, DTS uh, X, or PCM, or whatever the audio codec that it is uh, showing up on a receiver, it will show up on the front display. But there are different options where it could show how many speakers are are hooked up. It can show the volume level on certain cases, which I thought is very interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of switch to that. So you see right here, you see the front center surround 
the front speakers, you got HDMI status. You can show that you have a one main and out zone status. That's if you want to set up a different zones. They got system status. So they got DSP programs. If anyone is interested in that for surround decoder, that's kind of like for me, audio decoder. That's what I currently use right now for Atmos. Um, excuse me for looking at uh, Adobe or DTS and you got output channels and that's kind of like going back to what I just said before but yeah I was just flicking through the menu I thought this was pretty neat this is when you do the remote to assignment 8 and you press the blue button and you go ahead and switch the display on the front of your receiver so I thought that was pretty neat and something that I think is useful for for me so I wanted to share that with everyone so what do you guys think of the Yamaha MusicCast application? Do you think it's easy to use? Do you think it's difficult, challenging? I want to know what your guys' inputs are. Please leave a comment if you can. If you like this type of video, if you do me a favor by hitting that like button and that subscribe button, I greatly appreciate it. Before I go ahead and sign off, I do want to let you know from the actual application, the MusicCast app, I did forget to, to show one thing. On there, you do have the option to turn it on on your phone and turn it off. So I think that's another great feature that people don't know about with the MusicCast application. So it's really good to, if you're trying to figure out where the remote is at, you can go ahead and control it from your phone, which is, I think it's a pretty good feature to use. But let me know what you guys' opinions are. I understand that People are a little bit frustrated Frustrated that we don't have the firmware update for the 4K 120. I'm pretty much bummed as well, but the receiver is still good. I just want to go over the tutorial for people who did buy the receiver or the new Avantage lineup for 2021, but I will do something in the future once they do have the latest firmware update. Rumor has it that Yamaha is going to move the firmware to February uh, 2022. So just like how I mentioned before, I'm, I kept the receiver. I'm keeping it. I'm not going to go into too much details or debate going off of Ankyo, Den and Morantz. I'm not going to go over this in this video. But in another video, I probably will kind of rant on some of the things I don't like uh, on the Yamaha receiver. But uh, but other than that, uh, this one it was specifically just going over the tutorial of the music cast and some of the UI on here. So I'm about to go ahead and end this video. I want to say thanks again for subscribing, liking my video. If you like this type of content again, please give me a like button. Uh, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see everyone on the next one. Take care.